Namaste uh, and good evening, everyone. Uh, okay, so today we are uh, discussing chapter 14. Uh, chapter 14 is uh, about the gunas, the three gunas, three gunas, sattva, rajas, and tamo gunas in detail uh, to a question asked by Arjuna, uh, raised by Arjuna, as Rishna replied by giving uh, the various subtle aspects of the sattva, rajas, and tamo gunas and how uh, in the day in the play within our minds. So uh, this actually gives the reason why we all of us actually, uh, you know, either, uh, you know, uh, succeed in our lives or fail in the life or uh, lead an average life, etc. I mean, in fact, uh, Arjuna was also inflicted by this. And that was the reason for the despondency that he showed in the first chapter. And uh, Krishna uh, was uh, giving the practical aspects of karma and bhakti. And now he is uh, uh, wanting, Arjuna wanted to clarify certain things in detail. And that is what uh, 13th chapter onwards is uh, doing, which is the jnana part of it in the deeper uh, sense. So we are looking at that. So basically we can all see, we have uh, through all these 13 chapters that we have already seen, we know that uh, the self is seated within our BMI. I mean, the sense and living in our BMI. It is. It doesn't. It is not something that we can differentiate. The modern science cannot show it separately. In fact, they can. It can show the body parts, the cells, and all the muscles and different organs, and even to the some extent the way the mind fun functions as well as how the intelligence work. In terms of you know the device that it hosts them, the brain, etc. But when you ask, uh, where is the self? That is when the problem arises. So we basically uh, need to understand that the self is resident right inside or every cell of our body. As, and it is residing within and giving us all the experiences. So it is the experiencer within us, the chetratnya. Uh, so in scientific terms, you can call it as the life uh, awareness, the consciousness that is within us is giving us the experiences as the experiences or the infinite, uh, in, infinite, the Brahman, infinite became the universe and that in the universe, each one of us encapsulates the self. And that self is now translating itself into a physical, chemical, and biological forces within us, into uh, uh, the intellectual, mental, physiological functions, ultimately, and expressing as thoughts. And then through our karmendriyas, and, 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 and using the panjendriyas as input devices, organs of senses and action, make us do things through our thought processes of remembering, forgetting, inferring, digesting, and nourishing our thoughts and other physical uh, parameters into actions, moving and sensing, etc. And that is basically how the infinity is now becoming the experiencer within us, the jiva, and then making us think and act in this world. So we, have, we, we know that this infinite Brahman becomes... <clears throat> The Shetratnya within us, giving these powers of you know articulation, thoughts and uh, and and movements, the powers which are which are actually apart from the actual devices and their characteristics, as just like electricity is completely you know impervious of whether it is going to give light or heat or coolness or whatever. It depends on the devices. So the device characteristics come from the physical, chemical, and biological processes within us. And the thought processes are different because of the various parameters that come into play and interact within each one of us differently. And we move, uh, we think and act in this world differently. So uh, at the beginning, uh, Arjuna wanted to, uh, Arjuna asked this question of how this is happening. So before that, let us uh, take a look at this scene again, the self. This is this is actually from the last uh, chapter, 13th chapter, Chetra Chetra, Yavi Bhaga Yoga, 22nd verse, where it explains that uh, the self, seated in Prakriti ignorance 
embodied in in a, in, in a scientific sense if we talk about that seated in ignorance means the self seated in the body mind and intellect that is how it should be interpreted as understood experiences the quality is born of nature okay quality is born of nature guna because of the various aspects the qualities attributes of the bmi the self which is seated in that in each one of us experiences as the experiencer it gives us the experiences born of nature of because uh, differentiated by the gunas the attachment to the qualities and then we get attached to those qualities because we have pleasure we are happy if we have pain we do not like it so likes and dislike comes in the attachment to the qualities comes in is the reason for seeking the good and the pleasant this because it is the self is seated within us and then giving us these pleasurable and the unpleasant the pleasant and the unpleasant experiences we start seeking what is pleasant for us it is the reason therefore the attachment to the qualities is the reason for us to seek the good and the pleasant that is how it was introduced in 1322 in the last chapter now that is a pointer to the next chapter actually which is the 14th chapter so here what is happening is the self is seated in the intellect mind and senses the body mind and the intellect seated in ignorance experiences sitting there it experiences the self powers it and it experiences in and then what happens is first uh, what happens is intellect attaches the self so that attachment process begins the self is uh, intellect attaches that self to our thoughts first it is to our thoughts the self is attached now to our thoughts who does that intellect intellect does that attachment and then the emotional the uh, part the mind attaches the self to the feelings emotions and finally the senses attaches self to the sensations and pressures that accrue out of those sensations through the senses so the complete attachment now comes in in the sense it is that is how the process happens within each one of us so if you look at that what then self starts experiencing because self when it empowers our bmi the intellect first takes over and attaches the self to our thoughts ideas for example ideations success failures elation dejection etc happens the mind attaches the self to the feelings of euphoria anger sorrow depression etc and to the sensations of the pleasures pleasure irritation pain etc happens because of that the all this happens through the intellect mind and body thus is clear so this is how the attachment happens this is how we all get tied so it is a natural process so if there is no point in regretting that you know i am you know attached to my intellect mind and senses though i cannot i am not be able to get out of it and you know this attaching itself is not the wrong thing it is you are pursued to get out of those attachment is basically what defines every one of us that is what gita is teaching us attaching getting attached is not a sin it is not a mistake that is the natural process how to get out of that only human beings can do and that is basically what gita is teaching us and that is what we have been discussing so far okay so this is the whole process this is what is summarized in this one verse here so it is this is why i illustrated through this point that we all of us are in in different uh, you know different uh, different ways you know you can say the first attachment happens because intellect attaches self to the thoughts and that thoughts is basically the initial step which actually first connects us, us to the bmi only so the ego ego that is the ego part so different all of us are differently positioned with a different our strengths of our ego that different strengths of our ego are shown uh, by the uh, sir, the 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 circumference of that circle which is thick and then or dotted broken and uh, dotted and ultimately it it is uh, it is not there you know it is there only for the sake of just being 
uh, existing as an individual. So, I mean, that is the highest level that we can reach in this when you are living. You know, there is there has to be some amount of ego without which we cannot live. So, that very minimal ego is on the right side. The, the one, the left, the highest, highly egoistic person is shown on the left side. Now, and this is how, you know, each one of us is, you know, uh, gradedly egoistic. And we exist in this world. And we have seen uh, also how uh, we live behind these egocentric, you know, impressions in this world. Egocentric impressions. When, when the body perishes, we live behind the egocentric impulses as effects in this out, outside world. <sighs> And, and, and these uh, impressions that we leave behind was in us, they actually start materializing in appropriate bodies. You know, that is uh, the concept of reincarnation, rebirth, etc. Which I wanted to illustrate it through this diagram, which I showed in the last class. So, okay, so this is how in each one we can actually uh, position ourselves in which of these circles we want. And then, uh, you know, it, 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 of course, we just cannot position that. We have to position it, uh, ourselves through our thoughts and actions. Okay, so basically, the gunas, the attributes, and the way we work in this world because of those gunas is basically what is defining each one of us. The guna or, or the attributes results in the kind of attitudes that we express in this world. Through, the, through our mind. The karma shows up as actions and it is varied because of the different kinds of attitudes that we bring forth into our actions. So the aptitudes that we bring about have been defined in the fourth chapter, creation, production, business and skills. The four types, which in uh, Sanskrit terms we can define as uh, Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. And the attitudes are that we bring about in our actions was defined in the karma yoga aspects, again, third and fourth chapters, as cooperation, sacrifice, dedication, and sadhabhava, accept and move forward, or abundance, a state of abundance. That was in the third chapter that we defined these four attitudes. So with these attitudes and showcasing it through our aptitudes, of creation, production, business, and skills, we exist in this world in different categories of you know vocations in this world. When the when the self enters the BMI, the guna based uh, BMI, and then starts expressing through karma. That is the when we become alive and kicking and starts thinking and acting in this world. This is what is happening. The intellect, what happens is attaches self to the thoughts, mind attaches self to the feelings and senses attaches self to the sensations as I said in the beginning and self experiences all this and we actually produce something good or bad or in between, pleasant or unpleasant, etc. You know, depending on how far these aptitudes and attitudes play through our mind. So, the four divisions of human society based on this aptitude and vocation, guna and karma, were created by the powers of the self, by me. Krishna says by me. That means the self within me, the Krishna within me, were created by the powers of the self, expressing through the body, mind and intellect. Though the self is the author of this system, self actually makes us express these in the world. So it is called as the order. Self is the order of this system of division of labor. One should know that it is not the self that actually is differentiating. Self does nothing directly. Self is just the enlivener. What is it that actually makes this differentiation? It is the gunas and therefore the karmas. And the self, and understand that the self is eternal. It is everyone's is the same. It is it, it was always there. It doesn't get destroyed. So this is how it is defined in the fourth chapter, 13th verse. And then in 1322, that is what we discussed earlier, the self seated in ignorance experiences the qualities born of nature. The as chetra, in living, 
the Shetra and then residing in it as the Shetrajna. The attachment to the qualities is the reason for seeking the good and the pleasant. Okay, so qualities of mind decide the level at which we work. Attachment to negative tendencies or attributes is the cause for limitations in all, limitations in all actions. So, in this chapter, we are going to see Krishna. I mean, in fact, Arjuna uh, um, uh, was uh, asking this question to Krishna that, uh, you know, he was asking to elaborate that sublime knowledge, the best of knowledge, which having learned which, we will be able to proceed to perfection or raise ourselves to perfection. That which will help us, the knowledge that will, which will help us one to reach oneness with the self, to be with our self and escape the bondage of all limitations. The escaping the limitations is called as escaping bondage. That is the release or moksha. What is moksha? Moksha in this life, a life, living in this world, life is about you getting free from all the kinds of limited and negative thinking of the body, of the mind, and therefore the limitations of the body and the mind. So now, therefore, what is going to be answered here by Krishna is, what are the gunas? In what ways is the self attached to the gunas? How is the self bound by these gunas? And how to obtain liberation from the gunas so that you become free, uh, bondage free? And what are the characteristics of such a liberated individual? How do you actually differentiate such people? So these are the questions that this chapter, this is a short chapter of only 27 verses, is addressed. So uh, the, the power, the initially, the first uh, uh, few verses, the power of the self, which is resident within the BMI as the conscious energy of that creates awareness within through the senses is placed in the womb of nature. It is kept inside the womb of nature. The BMI is the womb of nature. The great materiality principle. It is, you know, everything physical with it. And everything emanates from that. So of the moment, the self impregnates the BMI and is giving life to it, it starts expressing itself. Whatever forms are produced, physically, you know, there are various kinds of forms are produced because of this uh, self enlivening it. Material nature is the form giver. The material nature, the outer world is created by that. The, whatever we see is the form, the form giver. Prakriti, the nature, the gunas is the form giver. It decides what kind of activities that we perform, what kind of activity, activity that each thing performs. A green leaf is capable of photosynthesis, you know. So it is that leaf's characteristics that actually makes it perform that action. Similarly, anything, any object in this world. So the characteristics of that physical thing, that is what actually gives it the form and its characteristics and its nature. And the self, that is the power of the universal energies that give it the life, is the life giver. So we have the form giver, which is the Chetra. You can now, if you connect it to the 13th chapter, the form giver is the Chetra. And the life giver is the Chetra. Making it reside inside of the self. And then what happens is, Sattva, Rajas and Tama Gunas. These three Gunas, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas arising out of the material nature bind the embodied, bind the self to the body. So it's like this, you know, it actually pulls it to the body. The self is now connected to the body. Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, these properties that arise out of the material nature bind fast the embodied self in the body. So this is how all of us are created with the different characteristics. That is uh, 14.5. And then in uh, the next 
few verses, seven, eight, nine, six, seven, eight, and nine, four verses. The first introduction to these qualities are defined. Satwa is about Nirmalatwa. Purity, which is luminosity and health, which, which is represented, representative of luminosity and health, of brilliance, of brightness. Satwa binds. And what is it? It is the in one word, if you define luminosity, health, etc., it is in one word it is called as happiness. Happiness. Satwa is happiness. So satwa, I mean, satwa is. Basically, you know, what happens is Sattva binds the Jiva, the Chetranya, by attachment to happiness. So our attachment to happiness is Sattvic. I mean, the, the quality of Sattvic nature coming through through our mind is basically what this is about. So Sattva binds the Jiva by attachment to happiness and knowledge. And knowledge is also another, uh, the knowledge is another aspect of, uh, you know, happiness. So it is that Satchitananda, Ananda Swarubam, now is showing through us as our quest for happiness as well as the quest for knowledge. So that when I want to have knowledge and I am running after knowledge, that means I am now bound to my BMI by this quest, Sattvic nature. Sattva binds Jiva by attachment to happiness and knowledge. Sattva attaches one to happiness. That is the quality of Sattva initially defined. Then comes Rajas, seventh verse. Rajas is passion, the driver of actually selfishness and attachment. Attachment and selfishness, what drives you? That power within you to actually go after these things is Rajas. Rajas binds the Jiva by what? So why do we go after things? Because we want some result out of it. So, Rajas is binding the Jiva through the fruits of the work. Attachment to fruits of work. So, our attachment. So, if ever I feel that, you know, I want this and I am, you know, because of this, I want, I want, I am going after the results. That means Rajas is working through. Rajas attaches one to the results of action. So, attachment through happiness, attachment to your drive for the results of actions, Rajas, and now, Tamas. Tamas is what? Tamas is ignorance that delude the embodied. So when Jiva, the Shatranya inside us, gets connected with the BMI, and if it is showing delusion, ignorance, etc., that means I am Tamasic. Tamas binds Jiva by inadvertence, laziness, and excessive sleep and dullness, etc. So tamas attaches one to what? Negligence. Tamas attaches one to negligence by covering knowledge. Negligence through covering of the knowledge. When the knowledge is covered, you become negligible, ne ne negligent. So tamas attaches one to negligence by covering knowledge. So this is how in the first four verses, the various characteristics of sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic qualities are described. So what is Sattva? What is Rajas? What is Tamas? We all talk about Sattva Rajas Tamagunas. We need to understand in finer detail. So making Arjuna understand the finer details of the Sattvic, Rajasic and Tamasic qualities is basically what Krishna is doing through this chapter. So it begins by fundamentally defining what these Gunas are by describing how they actually bind you to the BMI. Bind the self to the BMI. Okay, I think that was clear. It is very clearly described in these verses. And so we will move over. Now, again, again, character, you know, characterizing this uh, gunas, Krishna says, goodness prevails. How does goodness come out? Goodness can come out only by suppressing rajas and tamas. Sattva can become predominant only by suppressing rajas and tamas. So, Suppress that, you know, suppressing rajas and tamas, the sattva becomes dominant. Similarly, by suppressing sattva and tamas, rajas can become dominant. 
So a rajasic person, he suppresses knowledge, pure, pure purity of knowledge as well as tamas, ignorance. And a tamasic person by suppressing sattva and rajas becomes tamasic. So that is how uh, we have to, so we can actually start mapping this on to how we can suppress these things. You know, in, in practical terms, we'll actually, I'll be, uh, I mean, I'll describe this quickly and then we'll go to some practical examples of, you know, uh, I'll give you some detailed exposition of the practice uh, where we can actually apply it. So, I mean, you, you can think about uh, various things and then say, you know, how, how can you actually uh, uh, make your sattva dominant? And by the simple answer is to, by reducing unwanted rajas and tamas, ignorance. That's it. You know, a very simple answer. That is basically what uh, the initial dis, uh, definition says. So that is done in the 10th verse. Rajas tamas cha abhibhuya sattvam bhavadi bharada. That verse, the 10th verse. Then in the 11th verse, so what, what happens when goodness prevail or passion prevail or ignorance prevail? That is what is now answered. No. Yes, uh, we can become predominantly sattvic or rajasic or tamasic by suppressing the other two. But then what happens if we actually do that for each one of them? That is what is described now in the next three slides. I mean, in the sense of, you know, so we are going to describe that from 11th to 15th verses. What is uh, talked about is identifying your predominant guna. So now we need to know what is guna a little bit more in detail. So each of those guna. So that is described. 11th. What uh, when you are keen in the pursuit of knowledge, sattva is predominant. So if you are actually somebody who is seeking knowledge, somebody who has the tendency to seek knowledge, then you are a sattvic person. Sattva is predominant. Not it is that. Not it's not stating that you are sattvic. It's saying that you are sattvic predominant. And when you are keen in the pursuit of pleasures, that means rajas is predominant. And when you are keenly pursuing a forbidden path, you are going after, you know, bad roots. Then tamas is predominant. When sattva is predominant, you will gain the purity of knowledge. And when rajas is predominant, you will become selfish, like an animal when in tamas. So when you are rajasic, you will become highly selfish. And when you are tamasic, you will be like an animal. That is how Gita defines. So we can decide, decide, you know, whether you know we go are we sattvic, are we rajasic, or are we tamasic. So depending on what we do in this world. How we interact in the society, how we interact in workplaces, how we interact in family, etc. We can decide whether we are sattvic, rajasic or tamasic. The relevant information, knowledge is given by Krishna for us to actually do this by ourselves. That's what he is doing. That is why the detailed descriptions are being given here. Okay. Then, so let's look at that. You know, now uh, uh, the... 11, 12, 13, that is, I'll describe it to some kind of, uh, you know, example, practical example kind of thing. So, I mean, basically, you know, uh, our, uh, the especially for younger generation and all, we, I use this example, so I'm using the same thing here. It's about, you know, uh, the kind of uh, obsessive, what they call, attraction towards social media and those kind of uh, activities. So keeping, a, you know, for example, keeping awake at night, going through this, you know, instead of getting proper sleep, browsing through the your face in you know, social media. Let's say the self power powering our intellect, the mind, and the senses, ear, skin, tongue, nose, and eye. It is working through us now. This way, let us say this is this way. So. Now, what, has, what is described so far is that the intellect, you know, now no, let's say what is happening. Intellect wants the mind. Intellect is telling our mind that, you know, this is not uh, correct. In the sense, we should actually get proper sleep and we should not be, you know. Intellect is telling me, fine. Mind controls itself. Mind then have to take control. Pull us back, you know. Emotions, we should not get 
blown away by emotions. The senses then will follow the suit, follow suit. So if you are able to control through the uh, sattva qualities, which is intellect mourning the mind, mind controlling itself, and the senses following suit, in the sense for the senses deciding that like, I don't want this, and then you know putting it aside, and then that is sattva. Instead, uh, many times what happens is selfishness, uneasiness, or pleasure-seeking activities creates a kind of anger and you know, other kinds of um, emotions in, within our mind, with the regis predominating. So if the, the parents tell such a person, the, uh, you know, to shut off the light, switch off the machine, I mean, phone or whatever, there is going to be some tantrums. The emotion, the mind is now taking control. Or sometimes it, through ignorance, ignorance, negligence, delusion, you know, I, I for example, I screen and uh, uh, lack of sleep, etc. can be a lot of problems. We are not aware of it. People are not even thinking about it, health, sleeplessness and health issues. So, and also sometimes we do this because of, you know, when I meant to um, make ourselves present within the social media circles and want to be some uh, somebody that, you know, that pompousness kind of feeling, that is actually a kind of tamasic feeling, even though it is rajasic, it will say it is detrimental to our health, therefore it is tamasic. So these things, knowledge, passion and ignorance play a role in all our actions. So. Sattva can play a role. Passion can play a role. Or ignorance can play a role. And we act in different, three different ways. Sattva, Rajas and Tamas playing within our minds so that we act in three different characteristic ways. That is basically how we all work in this world. So, I mean, in the sense it is uh, when Knowledge illuminates the senses. All that when knowledge, so it says in eleventh verse that when knowledge illuminates all the gates in the body, senses in the body, that is gates. The word gates is used that is to show the senses. You must have, you know, I think we discussed uh, Purinjanovakyan and we talked about the various nine gates and the various activities of Purinjana. So. Here it is described again as gate. When the knowledge illumines all the senses in the body, eyes, ears, nose, etc., then it should be known that goodness is predominant. When passion Ill Ill illumines, Ill uh, passion is then a uh, predominant uh, value, then greed, activity, selfishness, restlessness, excitement, etc., excessive activity, excitement, etc., arise. When ignorance is predominant, darkness, inactivity, carelessness, delusion, etc. So 11, 12 and 13 describe the way this is reflecting in the outside world in our behavior. Now, let us look at the other way. In, in, in a kind of analogy, analogous uh, manner, analogous manner, electricity when it enters a device called as our light bulb, etc., light is produced. Okay, light. Same electricity, when it is pouring, I mean, something like a heater, heat is what is produced. A cooling uh, device like a refrigerator or something, a coolness is what results. Electricity has nothing to do with it. But electricity is what actually produces light, heat and coolness. But electricity is not the author of the system. The author of the system is each one of those devices. Their nature, their characteristics. That is what Krishna was talking about in 1411, uh, 411, sorry. I am not the author, but I create, I make it happen, but I am not the author. I am infinite, I am everywhere. I. That is that description, the self. Similarly, the self, instead of electricity, equated to self. The self, it is exactly the same thing. When 
it is giving out purity of knowledge. It is when electricity is giving out light, what is the device? The electric bulb. Similarly, when electricity or the self is giving out purity of knowledge as our dominant behavior, what is the quality of the mind? Sattvic. That is sattvic. When it is attachment to results, it is rajas. That is driving us. When it is exhibiting animal tendencies, then thomas is predominant. So, whatever is the state of my mind, the when the self comes within it and then exits out of it, it will take that quality out and then go out. The self. Self is now behaving like an animal. The self is behaving like a knowledgeable person, a knowledge giver or whatever. The self is now behaving like a arrogant personality. It so seems, but self is not the other. It is only enlivening those qualities within the BMI. If the self leaves the body when goodness predominates, so when self is leaving my body, when goodness is predominating, what happens? I, I will be a person who falls on the wisdom of knowledge and is proactive in nature. When the self leaves the body, when passion predominates, we will fall into reckless action. And when it is ignorance that is predominating, we fall into limited or lower or base actions. So this is what is described in 14.4, 14.14 uh, 14, 14 and 14.15. So now, Let's look at the same, uh, the three ways, the knowledge, passion, and ignorance driving us. When knowledge is driving us, a sense of duty and discipline and structure. So we are, I'm not looking at the practical aspect of how to shape your mind. Sense of duty, discipline, and sense of structure. If that is predominating my mind, then that means I am subject. Or when laziness, or I am procrastinating things, then tamas is predominating. When I set rewards and force the schedule and then work for those results, they just is predominating. So this is how it is. Knowledge, passion and ignorance playing a role in all of our actions. So when laziness and lethargy and dull-wittedness etc. is actually predominating my mind, sense of duty, discipline and structure will create this kind of uh, kind of feelings within us. Angry, anger, and, and such other, you know, characteristics within us. So I mean, we will not like that sense of duty, discipline, and structure when laziness and procrastinating mentalities are predominating our mind, mindset. And if you are such, let us say if you are in such a state, how can you actually transform yourself into sattva? It's very difficult. To go from this to sattva, for, from this tamasic state to the sattvic state. Going from tamas to sattva is a very difficult process. You can try that. I'm not saying you should not try. But, but Krishna says, Bhagavan says, don't attempt it. The first step should be this. First is to get into this state. Set rewards and force schedules. Forcefully, and you know, even for even if it is for your personal gains, results. If you are lethargic and lazy, get out of it for your personal gains first, which is easier. Which is easier for you to actually attempt setting goals like personal goals initially. Do that, and then from there you can transform yourself into sattva more easily. So first, from tamas to Rajas and from Rajas to Malina Sattva, Malina Sattva, contaminated Sattva initially to pure Sattva. That is the route that anybody can try. We, we should be trying because that is the easier route and that is the more practical route. So from procrastination to action to discipline. 
that is that is the path that we should actually form so that we can transform our gunas. So, for example, let's say developing and nourishing a new hobby. A simple example. So you are first a new hobby means you don't know anything about it. So it is tamas. You start doing things even in ignorance. So, okay, I want to do, I want to become something and do start doing something. For example, maybe I, you know, I've never tried gardening. You know, I want a vegetable garden. I have never tried it. So if you want to do that, as far as garden is concerned, I am in tamas. So what Bhagavan Krishna here prescribes for such people to start doing something is on that line is you start doing things even in ignorance. You keep doing it, repeatedly failing. You persist with it. Then slowly you develop passion for it. You will gain in skill sets. You will keep exploring. You will keep focusing on it and you are consistently working on it. You consistently working on it. That just is now becoming predominant. Then what happens is you start looking at all angles. You develop different perspectives about doing vegetable, uh, growing vegetables in your garden. You fill your knowledge gaps. You become an expert. You identify with that, and then people start saying, "Yeah, he is a person of green fingers." You will reach the state of green fingers. How? By transforming your tamas to rajas and rajas to sattva. This is the process. This is how practically you bring about a change within you in the gunas. So you use the power of the self within us, the witness, the chetratnya within us, to change, transform in the gunas, the mind, the mind's way of thinking. From tamas to rajas to sattva, that process. This is how constantly things are taking place. In fact, from childhood, what we are doing that as a child going to school on the first day, we are filled with tamas. And then slowly you have to develop the passion and become an expert in specifically chosen domains. Through the processes of consist persistence, consistency and identification, persistence, consistency and identification. So persisting with something, trying to force things, that is the, within the state of tamas. Consistently doing things so that you start elevating yourself is rajasic. And identifying with that knowledge and that domain, that expertise, that is sattvic, ultimately. So persistence, consistency and identification. The process of manipulating the gunas. Okay, so now, 16th and 16th one, the fruit of good action. Now, what, what do we get out of this? Fruit of good action is beneficial and poor, pure, sattvic. Action is beneficial and it will be pure. The fruit of passionate action are pain. For example, when you're consistently and persistently, persistently doing things, there will be a lot of pains, a lot of difficulties that you have to go through. And the fruits of ignorant action are laziness. Sattva is virtuous. Rajas is agitated. And Tamas is negligent. That is the, the other aspect of the nuance of these gunas. Described in a different way. So, let us look at this. Effects. Sattvic. Rajasic and Tamasic effects in our daily life. Practical. It is a practical examples here or uh, practical perspectives. So, what do you mean by let's look at the Sattvic effect? Tendency to work and practice hard. Sense of duty and dedication. Focus of mind and concentration. Not being carried away by likes and dislikes and foresight of the consequences of your, all your actions. If you do not do something, something bad will definitely happen and therefore you are warned. That is knowledge, foresight for consequences of actions. That is the sattvic effect. If you are predominantly sattvic, these are the kind of things that you will actually exhibit in your daily life. 
if you are rajasic predominantly rajasic disorganized in work last minute rush etc feeling jealous of others always concerned of results only what do i get what will i get that is the drive that is pushing you through tendency to do what pleases you yeah i like this therefore i will do it i do not like it i will not do it reckless behavior and irresponsibility you know reckless behavior without thinking and then jumping into actions irresponsible behavior and all those things are rajasic effects amasic feeling of i know it all despite the gaps in knowledge even if you know that you are you do not know something you still assume that you know it or want to show through and then do all foolish things attitude of irreverence and indifference being you know completely uh, arrogant and neglect uh, neglecting respect etc carelessness and don't care attitudes mistake making mistakes tendency to do things despite knowing it is wrong bad things and lack of foresight and thinking no thinking a lack of foresight so this is the way this uh, gunas show through these kind of minds satvik rajasik and tamasik minds <laughs> knowledge of the self actually comes from goodness greed arises from passion and delusion and slowness of mind lethargy comes from ignorance and the result is if you are established in goodness if you are established in goodness you will rise to perfection upward northward movement if you are established in passion you will be at at best to become good or average players uh, player performers if you are steeped in ignorance you will go down 14 chapter 18th verse defines that i mean the effect of uh, ultimately the results of uh, this gunas now you will be free of limitations if you this if you see the self as beyond the limitations of the three modes of goodness passion etc the self actually is beyond even the all these goodness passion and ignorance as we said it is just the life giver it is just the life giver it is not the other it is the life giver only if you can understand the thing, that then what happens is you become knowledgeable because you know that yes i can utilize those powers to change myself that is the result of that knowledge so therefore you are free from limitations because you are not getting tied yourself to the present situation that you know something is not possible therefore it's never possible that kind of thought is limiting you but if you understand that it is not the mind that is actually going to help you it is a self within me because it is infinite and that can change the mind that knowledge will help you to release yourself from the limitations when you transcend the three modes that create the sattva rajas and tamogunas and go beyond that and start seeing it at the larger picture you attain limitlessness that is when you actually attain limitlessness then you will be free from all limitations you have to transcend the gunas meaning doesn't mean that you have to you know throw away all this and then keep quiet and do nothing no it is not that it is transcending the gunas imply your knowledge that helps you to actually make changes in the upward direction to predominate the sattva and do something for the society so your intellect mind and the body powered by goodness passion or ignorance whatever it is you know you have to keep changing this is how it is so understand that this process is taking place within your mind fluctuating between goodness passion and ignorance in your intellect mind and body you know keeping on doing that that if you understand then you will know how to control it and because you know that you are the self and not this intellect mind or the body so that picture let it sink in into your mind's vision that is what basically what is displayed there this is what you need to 
imprint on your mind whenever you are in any form of difficulty in any form of despondence think about this situation and transcend the limitations by understanding the power of the self okay so moving forward What are the characteristics of such a person that who has moved beyond this gunas? That is expressed. Arjuna asks this question in verse number 21. And then thereafter, from 22 to 25, in four verses, Krishna answers the question. <laughs> that is, if you can transcend the gunas, then you will be harboring no likes and dislikes. You will actually transcend the likes and dislikes. You will transcend the distractions, not easily distracted, stays firmly rooted. You will uh, transcend your mind's play, equipoised and equi equanimous. Intellect, mind and intellect will be steady. And therefore, you will actions will be balanced, impartial, and unselfish. Balanced, impartial, unselfish. So, in four uh, verses, the characteristics of a person who has transcended the gunas is described. Stutha prajna. Characteristics of a stutha prajna. In verse number 26 and 27, the conclusion. One who is thus firm on the knowledge of the self and purely exists, exist in, this, exist in this world for the joys of the inner self with love and devotion transcends the three modes of gunas and become one with the self. Self-identification with the self is happens to such people. Selfless people identify with the self. You please understand that because the self is the basis of infinitude, everlasting order of things and of absolute bliss, you reach that state. So self is infinite, self is imperishable, self is immortal and righteous and of absolute bliss. That is how the chapter concludes. But before we actually conclude, I want to go into some practical aspects also. Tamasic. So basically, we should know that, you know, it is only the three gunas and we are not in, uh, you know, we, we do not actually be straight jacketed into these three gunas only. It is there is a mix of everything. So I am classifying it into five classes of intermixes, where you know, I mean, so that we can identify the weights. In fact, all the three will be mixed up within our body. So the purely tamasic, highly tamasic people, obedient and servile. So I, the characteristics of such people described in our daily life: obedient, servile. You know, it is obedience is not bad, but servility is basically bad. You know, and you are obedient to the level of servility. I mean, you just ask, somebody asks you to come and say, you know, you believe in one person so much that he comes and tells you to jump into a well, you will jump into the well. That is tamasic, servility. Reserved, complete, highly reserved, etc. kind of people who doesn't, you know, twinkle and then keep away from aloof, etc. Do not like the limelight at all. Keeps away. Not at all creative, shy, indecisive, non-committal, doesn't commit to anything because you are indecisive you, or you tend to hurt others, you know, either extremes no, and non-empathetic. You, 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 you do not understand people and then you hurt people, etc. Non-empathetic. This is all tamasic traits that we can exhibit in the practical living. Then there is tamasic rajas. It's a combination of tamas and rajas. Tamasic, predominantly tamasic rajas. But rajas, what is it? Tries harder to please others. You will go out of the way to please others, even if it is wrong things. Doing by doing wrong things. Depend on others for most things. You are you do not take ownership and always depend on other people to tell you to do something and help you, and then you will do something. Apprehensive, you know. Always apprehends, afraid of doing things, taking initiatives. Caves in under pressure. You know, even if you know that something is right, somebody puts pressure on you, you cave in. 
cynical, always cynical and negative about things, quarrelsome, fighting with others, creating problems for every, within teams, unduly critical. You know, some people are always critical in teams. You know, whatever others do, they will always criticize that only and then create problems. Afraid of losing. Not do anything or they are afraid of lose, uh, losing and therefore comes up with kinds of explanations that are contrary to what is really required, etc. Prestige and influence craving. You know, for uh, those kinds of, you know, to create your own self power, etc. You keep doing things and unrealistic in, in, in uh, doing things, in, in estimations, un unrealistic estimating your work, unrealistic in your expectations and all those things form under Thomas and Critics. Then, so, in, in, uh, in, at the workplaces, you can see these characteristics in such people, in, in Thomas or Thomas and Critics. Such people, miss opportunities because you know opportunities are is walking past you you don't see it and you don't recognize it or you don't you know uh, grab the opportunities because you are fear fearful of losing etc uh, they hesitate to occupy white spaces white spaces is not it does not take initiatives so that you know things that are not defined you don't grab it so that you know you become more and more expanded. You don't do it because you are again, you know, driven by Thomas and Thomas Eclipses. And therefore, you become a cubicle staff. I mean, in the sense you just always live within your cubicles, not interacting with others, no networking, and all those kinds of uh, you know uh, things that you should actually be doing in this, especially in the 21st century workplaces, it is very important. Rebuffs colleagues, always fights and quarrels with colleagues and or makes complaints about them and toast the management line only whatever happened whether you are you, you know that it is wrong still you will do that you will not raise any objections toast the management line only does what is told nothing more nothing less pessimistic in outlook keeps on reinventing wheels likes status quo Okay, the thing is, there is no problem, so let me go like that. You know, always in the comfort zone. Wrong estimates, making wrong est estimates, etc. So this is, at the workplace, the tamasic and tamasic regis qualities are reflected in these kind of ac actions. Now, the next is regis, purely regisic. Aggressive and forceful, envious, impulsive and emotional. Driven by recognition only, craves recognition. Puts pressure on themselves and others. You not only put pressure on yourself, you pressure, pressure on others also. Selfish. Driven by superiority complex. Impatient. Prestige and influence craving. So this is Rajasik. And reflected in what place? Like these kind of uh, traits. Transgresses boundaries, you know, I mean, uh, unnecessarily will transgress boundaries of, uh, you know, team and uh, project or, you know, all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, uh, boundaries that are kept. You will not, you will try to cross over that and try to do and interfere with others, others work, etc. <laughs> He's always on the prowl, sorry. Uh, very aggressive and, and action oriented. Proactively toast the management line. <clears throat> Fights. <coughs> Sorry. Fights creates unrest among teams. Aggressive outlook. Aids and abets requirements creep. I mean, in the sense, you know, there are some people, you know, working the team defines uh, project uh, requirements, but they will go unnecessarily be aggressive and then start doing things that are not within the scope and then, you know, then exceed budget, exceed time, all those resources, exceed resources, all those happen. Always misses deadlines because of that. Aggressive estimates, estimates are very aggressive. Something that can be done normally if you really uh, rationally looking at it within seven days, such people will say, I will do it in two days and then create, you know, problems. Ultimately, after two days, nothing happens. And then it goes beyond even seven, five days or whatever. 
because of estimate uh, going wrong, aggressive estimate, making aggressive estimates works for the self only and incentive driven. Just imagine, put you with this, all these qualities, think about a leader with these qualities and a team working with such a leader and a Rajasic leader. It will be hell for those people who are working in, with such a person. You know, the project manager or the project leader setting aggressive deadlines, which is unrealistic. Or such a, a leader, you know, taking up a project, defining the boundaries and then going over the boundaries by, you know, requirements creep and all kinds of, you know, activities. So such people, the team will also suffer. That is Rajas in action in the workplaces. Now, similarly, now we have Satvik Rajas and Pure Sattva. Hatha Rajasi is about setting challenges, challenging goals that are realistic, exploring alternatives, the ability to explore alternatives, self-growth and fulfillment is the driving force, growth and development of people, those people who work with you within the team and those people who work under you, etc., shares thoughts and feelings, friendly and cooperative, develops and maintains pleasant relationships, always looking at the details, Detail, details oriented and time conscious also. That is Satvik Rajas. Whereas pure Satvik means success is linked to efforts is basically what he believes. Such people believe that success is only linked to efforts. You know, and that is a you know black and white uh, kind of picture. Success is linked to efforts. You put effort and then if you don't succeed, you will start saying, no, it will, this will not fail. I mean, in the sense, he keeps doing things without actually in some places, you may have to apply Satvik Rajas. Then only you can go forward. You may have to play it to the, what you call the psychology of the organization, etc. And then only, you know, sometimes you will be able to rise up. So you have to combine a little bit of Rajas, otherwise you may find yourself in trouble. Think ahead and plans. Always think ahead and plan is a capability that of sattvic nature. Learning from mistakes, learning and experiencing, creative, balanced, empathetic, thoughtful and considerate, coaching and counseling kind of personality, and compassionate. Such people are purely sattvic. Very good qualities are there. Some of the qualities may need to be sometimes inject, injected with some rajas in our actual workplaces. That is all. So, now, the, let us look at the characteristics of such sattvic rajas or sattvic persons. Such people who are driven by sattva or sattvic rajas <coughs> understands and grabs opportunities. They look ahead, they know that you know opportunities come by, they are knowledgeable about that and they will grab the right opportunities, they will take the right kind of risks without unnecessarily jumping into dangerous zones. Smartly occupies white spaces. Smartly occupies white spaces. It is not just doing something, you know, okay, for the sake of creating or, you know, capturing the attention of superiors, becoming the go-to person. The such people will be the go-to person. You know, every organization will have such people. Who are the go-to people? You know, every management goes to them. Team leaders goes to them. All the colleagues go to them. Everybody in the organization go to them for anything. Great team player. Such people are great in team playing. Exhibits courageous conscience. Okay, I will describe this courageous conscience later in the 16th chapter because Krishna defines this courageous conscience as a Deviga Sampad, which we will describe in detail there. Exhibits such courageous conscience. Proactively moves forward. Optimistic in outlook. They will show incremental creativity, prudent in breaking status quo. In the sense, they will break status quo, but they'll be prudent in doing that. More or less correct estimates will be given by such people and applies all strategies that are successful uh, for success, uh, in, 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 uh, which is full of this Yatyaga Samarpana Prasada Bhavas. So, this is how the various Sattva and Tamo, the three Gunas, actually comes and joins together in actions and then exhibits in the outside world. So if we know this, how it is at the workplaces, we can actually start cultivating. We can start cultivating, if you are at this level, tamasic level, then first 
try to be at the rajasic level and then transform yourself to a star player in three steps so that is a brief summary the a summary of these gunas and their uh, characteristics once again displayed as uh, in colors also white red and black i will be posting this summary so you can look at that uh, later on and study this and then start inculcating that within our uh, what you call bosom and therefore we can start reflecting the sattvic gunas more sattvic rajas more and become successful in life okay so you can look at this i i okay this for example when you remove selfishness out of these gunas what happens is you will actually cultivate the successful gunas that are required of that uh, which is uh, for uh, obedient but not survey in the way of physical actions the reserved uh, it is uh, we, we may be reserved but you know require, i mean whenever uh, uh, that reservation will be require, uh, applied only for relevant things sleep when needed rest when required indulge moderately rajas driven by momentum quotient keeps progressing yourself priorities and requirements are important calm and collected does not create tension treats everyone equally organizational goals become your objectives and goals uh, sattvic nature thoughts and plans uh, learnings and experiences creative balanced empathetic thoughtful and considerate a teacher by when who mentors mentor coach etc compassionate so these are characteristics sattva rajas and tamas in our uh, successful daily workplaces <laughs> workplace success these are required so it is about uh, the practical tips is about you know turning the knobs of sattva rajas and tamas so you can consider the sattva rajas tamo gunas are as three knobs within you just like you know the radio volume control frequency control trouble control etc three knobs if you can adjust that you will get the good best music out of it you find you if it is slightly one of them is slightly bad then you will actually start hearing hissing sounds when all three are perfectly positioned then the right music will come out so sattva rajas and tamas they need to be managed properly and what are the practical types that we actually got be alert be conscious be aware you know raising awareness being analytical thinking about what is required controlling sensory intakes diet controlling diet sensory intakes observing others and sequentially conquering negative tendencies that is how the gita defines it sequentially conquering the negatives that is sequentially conquering meaning from tamas to rajas and rajas to malina rajas malina malina sattva and then to sattva that that is why i showed that transition diagram so this is the way of sequentially conquering tamas and bad rajas you balance the gunas it is almost it is also in another example would be some the veena you know you know the veena the instrument you have the various uh, you know uh, handles there to actually adjust the uh, the 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 what you call the strings and the rightly adjusted the string will produce the best music so you, or you keep adjusting ultimately you get the best music so you have to fine tune our mind like a veena and get the best music out of it the self will then express through you as swam geeda the music of the self if you fine tune the self is there in everyone except to that we have to fine tune our mind twist and turn the strings of saptarajas and tamogunas so that the swam geedam flows out of you okay. that is uh, the practical tips you know live in the present let your watchdog brain be active always the b brain there is a, some concept called a b a brain and b brain a brain is completely connected to the senses and the outside world 
it reacts you know symptomatically in the sense of you know impulses and but the, don't jump the b brain should control it and then stop it where it is develop the right networks keep the right uh, what you call as the cell sangam connections networks within the organization within family circles within organizational circles etc within domain knowledge circles the right you know experts if you are able to connect to then your progress will be faster you know just imagine you know the we we used to talk about that in organizations especially in our thought powered workplaces and all if you are uh, you know nobody is an expert in anything and our projects are so complex that you need multidisciplinary expertise and multidisciplinary expertise does not come very cheap and uh, you know and you may be an expert in a particular domain but uh, your project requires you to actually get involved in some other domains which you are not an expert in because you have to integrate them together then the fastest progress can be made only when you know the right people to connect okay i i do not know about b so to get the b to be accomplished i need to get the help of someone if i directly know that someone who can help me i will be fast or at least if i know some person x who can point to that y then i go to x and the x tells me uh, or connects me with y and then i get information from y i wait i may be slightly delayed but i get it if suppose that level goes more than 2 or 3 or 4 then you are getting delayed delayed more and more so reducing the delay reducing the delay is basically what is required reducing reducing the delay to connect with your connections is required so that is uh, the that can be done only through developing the right networks so keep developing your networks learn from others uh, learn from others borrow from others for uh, no, that is another thing learn learn from others if you want to mimic the characteristics or patterns of thinking or patterns of behavior of people who you admire there is nothing wrong learn and mimic learn from them how how did that particular person succeed why did he succeed his characteristics his ways of thinking his ways of action if i try to bring it into my repertoire of thinking and action then i will also become successful learn from others more or shamelessly progressive elimination of negative tendencies sequentially conquering the tendencies understanding realizing and existing in the power of the self realizing the self by the self udareet atman atmanam so that's basically what it is so the just to conclude so we need, we are talking about the knowledge of the self that people must attain to uh, reach perfection and this knowledge will be free uh, or uh, free, will be able to free you from hope and despair the power of self is what enlivens every one of us power of self is what enlivens every one of us matter and its modifications is the form giver and the properties of matter bind the self okay so basically we are looking at the satvic rajasic and tamasic tendencies binding the self <laughs> slogas 1 to 5 verses 1 to 5 talks about that and then we are talking about the basic characteristics of gunas what are they one sloga 6 talks about goodness satwa which is purity illumination and serenity sloga 7 talks about passion rajas which is about lust greed and craving and sloga 8 which talks about ignorance tamas delusion and ignorance so for the uh, satvic satwa binds by happiness rajas by results to, uh, of actions and tamas by laziness and sleep that is 7 8 9 if satwa is predominant knowledge purity serenity etc if rajas is predominant we have greed selfishness uneasy and envy in me sloka 13 if tamas is predominant ignorance inaction negligence and delusion 
Sloka 14, purity of knowledge results out of sattva. Tejas, attachment to results. 15, animal tendencies from tamas. Sixteen, the verse talks about virtuosity as the result of purity, sattva, agitations out of rejas, and negligence out of tamas. Knowledge, greed, and delusion, the results of sattva, rejas, and tamas. Verse number 17. Verse 18 talks about the progress, upward, Average performance, stagnant, downward for Thomas. Sloka 19 to 20 talks about the self. You know, if you understand the self, then you actually reach to a state which is defined in 22 to 25. That is no likes and dislikes, no distractions, fam, uh, firmly rooted equanimity, equipoise, balance and impartiality, renouncing the results become the result. That, that is how the, when the self is driving you through, this is sattvic predominance happens. I'm sorry. So, such a person who is uh, powered by the self is actually, you know, in tune with the self, which is infinite, imperishable, immortal, eternal, and is the seat of absolute bliss. So that is how you transcend the gunas by, and reach this state. So this is basically the 14th chapter in one slide, one infographic, uh, with all the verses I defined shown there. And there is a summary which I posted in the group today, but I will again post in summary. So that was uh, this. Uh, this was the summary of uh, the chapter, fourteen chapters, fourteenth uh, chapter. All the verses one to twenty-seven, and each line is described by one line here, and uh, subtitled as groups of what exactly those groups of verses are describing. One is about the first is the preface, and then basic characteristics of the gunas from six to eight. Then uh, the results of attachment and suppression nine and ten of how for goodness or uh, the, the, the gunas attach you, you to different uh, uh, kinds of behavior. Predominance of each guna and what the results are, the effects are, and the, and, and the effects and the results are described in 16 to 20. And ultimately, the transcendence of the gunas and the characteristics of such people and uh, the identity with the self. So with this, we will conclude for today with the mantra and then we can discuss uh, uh, Before we enter discussion and before everyone, uh, someone, some of you may leave, uh, I wanted to uh, just announce that you know we will have the next three weeks we will not have the session because I will be out of station around July 5th, July 12th and July 19th, next uh, three Fridays. And uh, we will therefore uh, restart the session with chapter 15, the next chapter, which is the actual one chapter Bhagavad Gita, chapter 15 on July 26th and thereafter 16, 17 on August 2nd and August 9th. And finally, the last week, August 16th, we will have chapter one first half and uh, we will also uh, have, I mean, we will uh, split 18th chapter into two and then have two consecutive sessions on 18th, uh, so, sorry, August 16th and 17th, so that, uh, Friday and Saturday. I hope it is uh, it won't be a problem for you, but uh, we will conclude with uh, the final two sessions on Friday and Saturday, 16th and 17th, chapter 18. So this is for everyone. I will announce that in the group also. Yeah. Yes. Now we can.
um, listen to uh, Anandji first, and then uh, if anyone of you have any clarifications or comments, please. Anandji, uh, and, uh, your mic is muted, Anandji. So, sound. I, I, can you can you lower the mic? Can you lower the mic on your ear? Can you lower the mic uh, on the device which you have on your head? The mic, mic, mic. You can the mic. You can lower it because it is not in front of your mouth. The mic, mic uh, on the right side, on your right ear, on your right ear. No, the other. Yeah, that. My ah, right, right. Can you hear yeah. now? Ah, now I can hear. Yes. See, there is a question in the chat box. Ah, okay. Yeah, this is Vijay. Yeah. Um, hello, sir. It was really wonderful to and very interesting topic. Uh, I was just going through something like introvert and extroverts. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. along with the, the gunas. Yes. Uh, in the back of the mind, I was just thinking about uh, uh, that relationship. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You, you said in, on one of your slides, obedience, reserved yeah. yes, personality, yes, 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 yes. like limelight. Right, right. In fact. It, and that's time is sick. But, right, right. Yeah. In, in fact, it is, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, is it over? Question? Yeah, right. So, uh, my question was, uh, are, are these characteristics belong to introverts or am I missing uh, yeah, yeah, right. Got it, got it. I mean, I, I read it also. Yeah, in, here, the, the, the introvertness is, you know, uh, is also different shades of introvertness are there. Some people are introvert because they are, you know, lazy, not knowledgeable, and therefore they are afraid of coming out. Okay, introvertness coming out of ignorance is basically tamas. But there is also a calculated introvertness where you do not actually indulge in simply, uh, you know, exhibiting yourself, but reserving yourself, you know, kind of reserving nature. That is more of a sattvic rajas. So that, that, that the, these things, you know, because you cannot just one word introvert cannot be classified into one. There are uh, there, there are uh, there is good in uh, introvertness as well as bad introvertness. That is what I I meant. I hope that is clear. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. That uh, whatever that relates to that laziness thing. Correct. Uh, right, right, right. It, it depends. The driving force of the in, uh, inert. I mean, your uh, uh, introvertedness is very important. Okay. That, that is why I actually split those into five: sattva, uh, sat, uh, sattva, sattvic rajas, rajas, uh, tamasic rajas, and tamas. Uh, it will yes. keep to expand the 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 total spectrum of behavior in the gunas. And also divided that with about 10 characteristics under each one of them. So that there is about 50 characteristics I enlisted, but we can go on exp expanding and further refining it into you know, finer levels. So that, uh, you know, people. Uh, in fact, uh, some of these things I have found is that when we discuss this in such detail, splitting it up and then analyzing it, I have found the youngsters, for example, who are uh, new to uh, you know professional uh, works and work and et cetera. Like for example, some, some 23, 25 or 20, 30, less than 30 year old people who are new into professions, new into organizations and uh, new into teamworks, et cetera. You know, we talk about the various, uh, these characteristics, but then uh, they do not actually try, to, uh, are not able to connect it to the workplaces. So uh, that is the reason why I actually started refining it. And so discussing this with the, these youngsters, for each one of those characteristics and explaining to them what it is, they started understanding what it really is. And also uh, they try to make changes. You know, I have seen this happen in, in youngsters. It was, that is, uh, this, so this is actually in, uh, in, included in my self-analytics workshop, uh, which is actually self-analytics is Bhagavad Gita in uh, Bhagavad Gita intelligence uh, in, in the workplace. Uh, you know, uh, which which introduces uh, youngsters to uh, the uh, the wisdom of Bhagavad Gita in a very practical way, so that they they don't think that you know okay Bhagavad Gita okay something after sixty years, not so. I, I think Bhagavad Gita is more applicable to those who are in the twenty to thirty years of age. You know, it, it becomes a powerful powerful genie that comes out of them. And I, in fact, I've seen this happen with youngsters. 
And, uh, and I, um, unfortunately, of course, the numbers have been less because I've been doing it in a very small scale. <laughs> but uh, well, yeah, but then this uh, Gita, I mean, it is the 14th, uh, the 14th chapter itself, 27 verses describing Sattarajas Tamo Gunas gives us a lot of insight into finer aspects of these Gunas. And, and uh, the, the required wisdom is already implanted in the verses, but we do not uh, we take it out and expand it further. You know, we have to take it out and expand it further and give it to our ch uh, yeah, children and uh, our youth. Uh, I'm sure that it can unleash tremendous power of the self. You know, that is my personal uh, belief and I have seen it also happen in very, even if it is in a limited scale. Ananji. Yeah, uh, Ananji also is a witness yeah. to to that, uh, <laughs> there is another good question, you know, what is the ideal percentage of Sattva, Rajas and Tamasya? <laughs> yeah, in fact, in fact, uh, in fact, I, 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 I am, am definitely, yes, that uh, that gives some pointers. Swami Chimadadji has actually defined a certain kind of characteristics in terms of uh, uh, these uh, in... Uh, uh, Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaisa, Shudra kind of uh, classifications. But even uh, I, I, I personally don't think that it is that way only. It, it has got final five. Like what he says is, um, uh, let's say 90% uh, or 80% Sattva, 20% Rajas and zero, you know, Sattva, big say Brahmin. And just the reverse, zero, 20 and 80 will, be, uh, will make, a, uh, make a Shudra. And in between values of 60, 30, uh, of, uh, 60, 40, uh, sorry, 60, uh, 20, and uh, 10, and 60, 10, and 20 or something. That is for the uh, Kshatriya and uh, and and, uh, uh, and Vaishya. Uh, yeah, but that way what we are doing is you are actually delineating Brahmin, <laughs> Vaishya, Shudra, and, and uh, making the Shudras are lower, you know. Because Tamasik, more Tamasik. So I mean, let us not do that. But I would uh, think of uh, uh, this Sattva, Sattvic Rajas, Tamas, Tamasik Rajas, etc. as uh, you know different uh, uh, components, uh, in, in splitting into components and then uh, measure that in terms of uh, the Sattva Rajas Tamogunas. And you get it. In fact, I can, um, I can show you one graph that we have developed and we are working on it also. And uh, we have been giving that out to various uh, people to actually uh, uh, experiment with, which uh, uh, I will uh, show you. I will talk it, but meanwhile, uh, Anandji can speak I'll, um, uh, while I search for it. See, yeah. See yeah. actually, in one of your slides, you know, you yeah. had mentioned that uh, negativity limits action. Is uh, yes. it, uh, what is it? Uh, can you can I have some little uh, explanation? Negativity limits action is, for example, I think very you know uh, simple examples are there. For example, when you start thinking you are uh, that you are incapable of doing something, you know, or I am not up to it. I am not capable. I am, uh, that that is a negative thought. That negative thought actually results in uh, how does it reflect in the outward? Action? You don't work. You procrastinate. For example. Correct, correct. You are shy away from responsibilities. You do not, you are afraid of coming out of comfort zones, for example. Correct. So you are limiting your action. Ultimately, in the outside uh, appearances, your actions get limited. You are seen as passive. That is what happens. True. true. Yeah, next, you know, regarding uh, goodness. Yeah. Uh, goodness prevails by suppressing, suppressing rajas and tamas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Will it not be better to say goodness prevails by directing rajas and tamas? Um, yeah, in this, by suppressing rajas and the tamas is basically what Gita defines. Okay, in law versa. I cannot change that because it is how. It is. <laughs> okay. But you can actually understand why it is so. It is we are talking about rajas and tamas as the bad rajas and bad tamas suppressing it. Correct. Okay. That is That is true. These are the and, two things, you and know. And suppressing yeah. can be like controlling uh, to get the, uh, to be able to keep uh, the good and uh, throw out the bad. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can go on. I mean, I'm still searching for that. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. I actually wanted to ask one more question. Like now we are look when we look at this Rajas Tam uh, Tamo uh, Satvik and uh, Rajas and Tamoguna, then I'm I was just applying this to our three main gods also. So like is uh, Shiva kind of a tamasic kind of a uh, <laughs> no, I don't think we should. Uh, we we can do that because uh, no. the, yeah, those are actually three aspects of the self itself. It is not aspects of the mind. Huh. Yeah. So uh, the, uh, no, but the, like he uh, because it actually leaves hope, hope. You might have noticed in all, all discussions, everybody ends up thinking, okay, I have got only ten percent or five percent or one percent of sattvic this thing. I am mostly uh, tamasic and everything. But uh, in spite of that, the the that uh, the ability to persist and yeah. and uh, the uh, and to reach. The ultimate within whatever your your range is. Uh, what about that? Uh, well, say that again. I didn't fully really get to what exactly you are aiming at. No, I'm saying that like uh, uh, like we know what is ideal, what is uh, mm -hmm. perfect because uh, of the satsang classes that we are attending, the whatever we are cl extra classes we are attending, like yours and all that, all the good qualities. In spite of that. Uh, ultimately in practice very little of it is coming mm -hmm. so so then you tend to feel that like like a uh, hopeless case pola pala varukum thona but actually namaku uh, uh, instead of feeling hopeless case namaku oru oru range inde ullile nammal ai parna oru oru incremental improvement aanu nammal nokkunnathu uh, and the, the, uh, like you know it gives hope when you see that who, the people whom you think are are really great or even our gods get angry even our uh, you know like our life film sangadom angante okay events apo isn't that actually inspiring that in, instead of it becoming a blame game that okay you were bad so you were you know you becoming most of us are judgmental with us ourselves like and that is where we kind of then we turn off uh, that continuous improvement efforts. I, I don't know if I'm able to communicate what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, of course, uh, the we we have we have never talked about uh, this success or you know uh, excellence and non-excellence as two shapes only. Uh, I mean, two uh, two quarters only. It is about uh, it is about a gradual uh, you know a gradual polishing of your personality from uh, whatever level you are in. Uh, and uh, into from uh, maybe from uh, maybe I mean, non non performance to average performance to uh, superior performance to star performance. It is a gradual uh, gradual uh, change that is required, and uh, you set goals for each one of them. I mean um, intermediate goals, and you are talking. We we have always been in karma yoga also. Uh, the strategically we were talking about those incremental goals and uh, reaching those incremental goals and 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 uh, you know enjoying the success. You know uh, of milestones in between and then proceeding further that's that is how you you grow up i mean you cannot uh, expect it to be uh, you know unsuccessful today and tomorrow morning uh, you know by doing something you become the highest uh, successful person that never happens it is a gradual process of course uh, yes. sir thank you, you very much for all the sessions uh it's been really very inspiring uh, just, just I had this doubt that uh, now when you connected all these three gunas into five uh, by the combination, so I was just thinking, why not uh, sattva and tamas also goes like you know tamas and sattva doesn't go together. It has to be tamas, the tamas, tamas yeah, yeah, sat, and sattva. Sattvic, uh, sattvic tamas is also required. Huh. Okay. Yes, because for example, uh, you uh, you taking daily sleep. For example, you have to, you know, if you don't sleep, there's a problem. You, you have to sleep. So maybe six mm -hmm. hours a day or seven hours a day, regularly sleeping is a must. And that is, uh, that tamas is sattvic tamas. Because it is meant for some, you know, it is okay. meant for your health. And the health okay. brings in happiness. So sattva. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. So that, that okay. is something tamas. Yeah. So there is no, uh, you know, black and white to this thing with respect to sattva and rajas. But there are certain things that you are 
that are definitely tamasic, certain thing that has highly diegetic, which is bad, etc. In fact, I you know I was um, I, I just uh, got deviated. Uh, I didn't get that uh, uh, this uh, support PPT session PPT. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm searching for that diagram which I wanted to show that we had developed. Uh, where is it? Where is it gone? I think after today's class, uh, whatever uh, deeds, whatever the actions we are going to take, uh, actually we can actually see what gunas they are into, and you know yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, helps yeah. us more practically. Correct, correct. Yes, uh, it it uh, it uh, helps you practically, and uh, it it is uh, we are able to actually be, uh, you know uh, uh, nuts and bolts level if we, uh, we if we start seeing things, you know I, it is like you know looking under the hood. You know, when you see that, then you will be able to connect it with my, you know, our life. In, in everyday work or workplace or life, we uh, take an example and then analyze with these elements, you will be able to connect it immediately. Instead of, you know, simply sattvic, sattva you know, you should increase sattva you should be less rajasic or less tamasic. These are only three words, the highest level. And those three words, if further details are never thought about, then you will never reach anywhere. So it will be just right. using these words and then going away. That is the reason why I split it into this. And uh, therefore, uh, you know, uh, it becomes more practical. Uh, so, okay, I think I will, uh, I will show it in the next session. Because I, I, I need to find that properly. If I connect these uh, um, the concepts uh, into that diagram and then show it, then it be mean if I can actually do it as part of chapter fifteen. Because of course, chapter fifteen is the essence of Bhagavad Gita, and I will get, definitely get the opportunity to connect that. I will get it ready, the files, and so that I can immediately display it, so that uh, it will become clear as to all this. I'm, I'm sure uh, you will be able to connect this after three weeks. <laughs> I will I will be posting uh, once in a while uh, to connect uh, so that we don't lose track. Uh, you know, relevant things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I think. Uh, let me. Your answer is. I mean, your question is clarified, right? Yes. Yes. It is. It is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think Satyaji, like you know, often uh, when we put it into a work context, we talk in terms of success and failure. Whereas Gita is actually telling you how to be ha ha free, how to be happy, how to have peace of mind, uh, and those kind of things. And no, that, Gita, uh, uh, and yeah, that is uh, that is the general notion, generally mistaken notion, in terms of we are looking at the peacefulness and free of everything, etc., as uh, you know, complete ren renunciation and not doing anything. No, that is not what Gita is teaching. Gita, uh, that, that, is a, that is a completely different uh, perspective of Bhagavad Gita. I mean, in the sense, uh, I'm not saying that is wrong. Uh, that is something uh, for such some people that is required. But um, uh, when we are uh, living in this world, dynamically living in this world. Actually, not what I'm saying. What yeah. I'm saying is like you can be free of the notion of success and failure and yeah. continue to work for the right. for your purpose. Correct. Uh, the free that from is notion. You happiness and uh, I mean, you know, that is bliss that we are looking at. Not We are not looking at a situation where because now you have understood all this knowledge, suddenly there is not going to be any sorrow in your life. Okay, yeah, uh, definitely no. no, no, no. Yes, yeah, yeah. The sorrow, I mean, when you get, when you become sorrow of, uh, sorrowful or you are faced uh -huh. with the tragedies or uh -huh. difficulties in situation, at that time, this is going to help you to say that and look, yes, yes today it is uh, tragic or, uh, you know, uh, desperate. But uh, tomorrow need not necessarily be so because yes. uh, tomorrow can be changed by uh, you doing something today. Yes. So you are freed from uh, falling into depression where right. you're, where yes. the sorrow has trapped you. Correct. This free getting free from these sorrows and fluctuations is not something yes. that is going to come automatically. It has it has to come from no. within you itself. Yes. For that you but need it, to put in self effort. Understanding this concept and not getting caught up again in the same, uh, like, you know, yes. uh, Raga Dvesha kind of uh, 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 duality. Right. Yeah. Understanding this, uh, that is gaining this knowledge. What is that ultimate knowledge that Gita is talking about? Even in the 14th chapter, it is talked about. That it is the identity with the self. That is the knowledge. Yes. And what is that self? That self is the just the order of the system. And not the actual 
uh, thing that makes the differences. And uh, sorrows are not created by the self. Okay. Happiness is also not created by the self. That knowledge. So what is creating happiness and sorrow? It is the mind. Yes. It is only that knowledge. Therefore, what happens? Then you know that what is to be done. We have to change the way we think. We have to change the way we do things. That is the way out of it. That is the knowledge that Gita is giving us in the practical sense. Yes. Realizing, yeah. to work for realizing your full potential or maximum potential uh, without feeling, uh, without being uh, caught up in the small failures that we pro, uh, experience along the way. Yes, that is why uh, the, uh, you know, that is what we described throughout these chapters. And in the 11th chapter, we have the Vishwarupa Darshanam, which actually uh, summarized that in, in, in uh, no uh, less terms. You know, uh, Vishwarupa Darshanam is your global uh, perspective. The, the light of knowledge of global perspectives is basically what is called as Vishwarupa Darshanam. Uh, which is about your complete acceptance of the power of the self and therefore accepting every situation, success and failure, pleasure and pain, uh, death and sorrow, birth, death and birth, sorrows, etc. as uh, uh, something that will happen in this life. Right. And, and then you need to go forward. Yes. Managing that. That perspective is called as Vishwarupa Darsha. And that is what uh, actually summarized in the 11th chapter as the practical summary of 11th chapter of uh, 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 Arjuna seeing everything you know, in Krishna, uh, Krishna himself in the universe and the universe is within Krishna itself and everything that is happening. You know, he, he was seeing uh, Arjuna himself being born, fighting and the Kauravas dying and ultimately the uh, Arjuna, uh, Pandavas also dying and then again, you know, the cycle going on. So, uh, the minuscule nature of your current state of affairs is exhibited very clearly. Right. So that is basically what it is all about. But actually, Satyaji, is this is Gita really? I mean, Shri Kumi, you are you that in the middle? You talk about Parnu or Kan or the. That that is what it is. You know, I mean, uh, let us uh, we will as. Yeah, as a jnana yajna here, I am. I will tell you that uh, you know this that this is symbolism. The whole thing is symbolism, of yes. symbolism of the of the war of uh, you know or the battle of life, life. battle of life between uh, negativity and positivity. Okay, okay. That happens within our minds, and how far the positivity then overcomes negativity and succeed. How, what are the processes by which the uh, negativities can be overcome by positivities and what are the uh, strategies uh, to be adopted and what is the mindset that you should have and what is the knowledge that you should bring forth into it. Karma, Bhakti, and Jnana. That is not what is described in uh, and, and, and in fact by, by 18th chapter, in the 18th chapter when I conclude I will actually summarize and picturize this and from the 18th chapter itself and show it to you also at that time. Okay. And uh, somebody, I think, in, in uh, which, uh, actually Vijay uh, had asked another question: Are we not trying to come out of all these three gunas? Uh, yes, the transcendence of the three gunas is the ultimate goal. Uh, when you say transcendence of the old gunas, even. Sattu guna is also a part of the characteristic of the mind. That's, that is basically what transcending the guna doesn't mean that throwing it away. Transcending the gunas implies your mind's knowledge of the fact that you, the identity, the true you, the self, is beyond all these gunas. Yes. That is yeah, that because was, uh, you have the intention of discussion, I think, uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, in response to somebody saying something that I had put back. Yeah, like, okay. uh, yeah, go on. Uh, yeah. Getting attached to uh, Sattva Guna. But here, yeah. our intention is going right. beyond uh, all of it. Yes. Not getting attached to any of them. Right. Yeah. Yes. In fact, even uh, in organizational, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, characteristics or, I mean, perspective also, you can see that, you know, there are good things that you can do, there are bad things you can do, and there are, you know, uh, very uh, I mean, uh, aggressive things that you can do. So constructive, aggressive, and passive things that you can do. There is some constructive things that you actually uh, want to bring about in, let's say, in your organization, may be contrary to the actual value system or the goal, the bottom line or whatever, you know, of the organization. And in that case, you should be able to transcend even that satuguna and connect yourself with the organizational uh, what you, bottom line. 
Okay, so which 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 actually in modern parlance it is called as the soul of the organization. Yeah, so mission or, 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 yeah, I mean in in our uh, terms, I would say self of the organization. So if, in an organization, as an ex, uh, you know, right from the first day in your organization, uh, our objective should be to understand the self of the organization. Once we understand the self of the organization which may translate to bottom line also, but I'm, we are not worried about bottom line, but the self of the organization is important. When the self of the organization is important, I mean, if you realize that, even some of the satric things, the knowledge and expertise and the drives that you bring may sometimes need to be curtailed so that the self of the organizational objectives is better rather than your personal objectives, you know. So uh, when you are working, in sync with the self of the organizations, you will have to transcend the Sattva Rajas and Thamogunas. That is what, uh, you know, in a microscopic sense, uh, in the practical world, Gita is teaching us. In fact, I think uh, there was, uh, in the last uh, section 13th chapter, we discussed about, I, I mean, I just showed some diagram, which uh, we I didn't uh, uh, basically uh, exp explain uh, explain much in detail, but uh, because that question came, I can probably actually uh, show it uh, for a few minutes and a few seconds, and then. Uh, Stop the recording. Yeah.